It's generally accepted by anyone who's ever been alive that most video game movies are pretty bad. Not all of them, Sonic the Hedgehog and Detective Pikachu turned out okay. But then you've got Street Fighter, Resident Evil, Uncharted, oh, and of course the Super Mario Bros. movie releasing next year. That's gonna be great. At least it's a step up from the last Super Mario Bros. movie. Oh no, wait, wait, Mario, don't jump, no, it's not, no, 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 no. Daniela. I promise to take it to WrestleMania. My point is that not all, but most video game movies are awful. Because the games they're based on prioritize fun gameplay over interesting plot points, meaning there's nothing to really build off of when adapting it directly to film. But back in 2016, the team over at Insomniac said, wait a minute, what if we made the movie first, and then released a game based on it? I will admit, that sounds like a foolproof strategy. What they failed to realize, however, is that video games based on movies also have a reputation for being horrible. The truth is, it's just basically impossible to craft a single script meant for both a film and a game, because you can't really have fun gameplay played at your own speed and interesting plot points that arrive with good pacing. There are a lot of things in this movie that were definitely shoved in just so it can be referenced with gameplay in the tie-in video game. Not only is it pretty distracting once you notice it, it also ends up making the story really choppy and awkward. Which, ironically, is the one thing this whole game based on a movie based on a game ordeal was supposed to prevent. And you can't cram an hour and a half of footage into a game that's only 10 hours long. So they had to selectively chop this already clunky story into just a handful of short cutscenes, which makes it even more incoherent. For example, about three-fourths of the way through the game, the main villain is finally revealed as a guy named Dr. Nefarious, in a way that's treated like a huge twist we never saw coming. But I didn't even recognize who this twist villain was, because up until this point, no one really mentioned him yet. Once I started watching the movie though, I realized why this twist was so awkward in the game, because it's not supposed to be a twist at all. In the film, he's established as the bad guy of the story right from the get-go, but when they sliced and diced everything up for the game cutscenes, they basically retconned him out of the first few hours of gameplay by removing all the previous scenes he's in. The cutscenes are so disconnected from what's actually happening gameplay-wise that it's actually pretty jarring sometimes. Take this boss fight toward the end. This guy has betrayed our team. He's trying to kill Ratchet and Clank. He's been nothing but a huge stinky jerk the entire time. So I pull out my rocket launcher, and I start shooting missiles at a stupid face. It's not easy, but just as I lay the finishing touches on my obliteration of his health bar, this happens. I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> In the movie, Ratchet loses the fight and convinces the guy that he's doing something wrong. But I guess the motivational speech he gives was too long to fit into the game, so instead the bad guy just stops being evil once he gets pummeled with enough missiles? I always felt deep down that I was doing something wrong, but now that I've been blown to smithereens with an RPG, I finally recognize that I'm a flawed individual. No, no, you have no health left. You are dead now. You see what I mean when I say a story makes no sense when it's trying to serve both gameplay and film? I'm not saying it's completely impossible to make a story that works this way, but it's pretty close to impossible. Video games and movies are just completely different media. You can copy general story beats, characters, and set pieces, but you can't just take the exact same script and use it for both mediums. I really appreciate their willingness to try something weird like this, and the script is pretty good considering it's attempting something that's basically impossible but I don't think it really worked out that well in the end. All in all, the movie feels like a 90-minute episode of Sonic Boom, and the game isn't perfect, but it's worth checking out if you can get a good price on it. I don't know, maybe I'll post a review of that eventually. So I'm gonna give Ratchet and Clank a 2 out of 5, but I'm gonna give Ratchet and Clank a 3 out of 5. So I guess all together it gets a 5 out of 5. Merry Christmas!